like to call the order of the uh, Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board meeting for Tuesday, June 11, 2013. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Ms. Palmer, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Meyer? Here. Mr. Landwehr? Here. Mr. Larkin? Here. Mr. Bridell? Here. Ms. Lee? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Great, thank you. Um, as is our custom, Columbia Heights Public Schools create worlds of opportunity for every learner in partnership with supportive small town communities by challenging all to discover their talents, unleash their potential, and develop tools for like lifelong success. Next on our agenda is agenda approval, adjustments, announcements, correspondence. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion. Second. Motion by John, second by Laura. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion is carried. Announcements, June 18th, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m., school board work session here in the community room. June 25th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., regular school board meeting here in the community room. July 4th, Thursday, district office closed for the July 4th holiday. August 13th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., regular school board meeting here in the community room. Superintendent Kelly, correspondence this evening. Mr. Chair, members, there's none at this time. All right. <clears throat> Next we have, should I stand over? Forget. You can just pass okay. it to me. All right. Next on our agenda is Heights Lights, and uh, I will pass it over to Superintendent Kelly and to talk about uh, honorable mention for the National School Board Association Magna Award. Thank you, <clears throat> Chair Bardell. Um, it is with great pleasure tonight that we celebrate um, both board and city elected officials, people that have worked together collaboratively for over six years in the uh, fine building of many things, and the, on the least of which is not relationships. Uh, I always say that if you have strong schools and strong communities, we work together, and that strong schools equal strong communities, and strong communities equal strong schools. And I think what we're going to celebrate here tonight is a perfect example of that. What I would like to do at this time is call on Principal Mary Busman to say a few words about the award itself and the partnership. Mary? Thank you, Superintendent Kelly, Chair Bardell, members of the board. This evening, we celebrate um, an award from the National School Boards Association. The National School Boards Association, in partnership with the American School Boards Journal and with the sponsorship of Sodexo, annually selects school boards throughout the nation to be recognized for innovative thinking. The Magna Award recognizes school districts that have taken bold steps to advance student learning. We are here tonight to locally recognize the Columbia Heights School Board and our strong community partners as they received national recognition with an honorable mention for the 2013 Magna Award. Through the partnership between city and the school district, the school board acted boldly and with innovation. Tonight, um, we are asking you to join us to recognize our board members and our community partners as we celebrate this honorable mention at the Magna Award. The partnership itself, it was entitled Synergistic Transformation, and it described the relationship of renewal between leaders in the city of Columbia Heights and the school district. By working together, they transformed their relationship into a synergistic, collaborative relationship that would benefit the community more than either could do alone especially in a time of significant fiscal constraints. The result has been the successful completion of six separate building, programming, and community art projects worth more than $11.8 million. The first project was the establishment of Encore, the free after-school enrichment program established in 2008. This was followed by building the Highlander Center in 2009, and the installation of the sculpture entitled Synergy in 2010. Later that year, construction began on the new pedestrian bridge that spans Central Avenue at 49th. And in 2011, the Islander Youth website was established following, and following that, 
was the building of the new softball field and playground in 2012. Tonight, we pause to celebrate the leaders who made this all possible. Superintendent Kelly. It is my pleasure if I could call the chair of the Columbia Heights Public School Board, Scott Bardell, to the front. And this evening, we would like to present the 2013 Magna Award Certificate of Honorable Mention. It's to the Columbia Heights Public Schools. It it's for synergetic collaboration, and it was awarded to us by the, um, the Sadesco Co Corporation and the National School Boards Association. At this time, we would like to call each member individually of the school board and the city council to be recognized for their leadership in contributing to synergistic transformation. Starting with our dear sweet mayor, Mayor Gary Peterson, if you please come forward, Gary, is recognized. The mayor, as well as everyone else tonight, um, in the next round, in these this next round of cert certificates, will be uh, recognized for leadership contributing to the National School Boards Association 2013 Magna Award Honorable Mention. The mayor has been involved with the Highlander Center, Encore, the Islander website, Synergy, and I must say he built the base of the for the for the actual artwork. Ramsdale softball field and playground and the pedestrian bridge. We would like to thank you for your dedication, dedication to students, staff, and the community of the Columbia Heights Public School District. Thank you, Mayor. The next award is to Scott Bardell for his involvement. And while Scott has been on the board, he has been involved in Encore, the Islander website, Synergy, Ramsdale uh, softball field and playground, the pedestrian bridge. Thank you for your dedication to students, staff, and community. <laughs> Tammy Deem is not here with us tonight, but we'd like to read into the record that she was involved in the Highlander Center, Encore, the Islander website, Synergy, Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. Let's have a round of applause for Tammy <laughs> Dean Councilman. <laughs> Senator Goodwin could not be with us tonight either, but Barb Goodwin was involved and on our board at the time, involved in Synergy and the Pedestrian Bridge. Let's have a round of applause for Barb. <laughs> Bruce Kelsenberg could not be with us tonight, but he is recognized for leadership contributing to the Highlander Center, Encore, Synergy and the Pedestrian Bridge. How about a round of applause for Bruce Kelsenberg? <laughs> Our next recipient is board member Ted Landwehr. Um, Ted is recognized for his involvement in the Highlander Center, the Islander website, Synergy, Ramsdale softball field and playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. Congratulations. <laughs> the next recipient is Missy Lee. Uh, she has been involved in the Highlander Center, the Encore, the Islander website, Synergy, Ramsdale Softball Field, Playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. Thank you for your dedication to the student staff and students. <laughs> Don Mersion could not be with us tonight, but he was on the board and involved with the Highlander Center and the Encore program. Congratulations, Don. <laughs> Councilman Bruce Naraki is not with us tonight, but he too is being recognized for his involvement in the Highlander Center, the Encore Program, the Islander Website, Synergy, Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. Thank you, Bruce Naraki. <laughs> Our next recipient is here with us tonight, and it's Kathy Olson. Kathy Olson was on the board and is recognized for leadership contributing to the Highlander Center, Encore, Synergy and the Pedestrian Bridge. Thank you for your dedication to the students, staff, and community in the Columbia Heights Public Schools. <laughs> Board member Laura Palmer is with us tonight, and she is recognized for leadership contributing to, um, let's, 
Got to wait for Laura. <laughs> Here she is. She's a board member and uh, <clears throat> with us now and has been involved with the development of the Islander website and the Ramsdale softball field and playground. Thank you for your dedication to the student staff and community. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Former board member Keith Roberts is with us tonight. And he is recognized for his leadership contributing to the Highlander Center, Encore, Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground, the Pedestrian Bridge, Synergy, and the Islander website. Congratulations, Keith. <laughs> Donna Schmidt's council person was here but had to leave, and so she is recognized for her leadership contributing to the Islander website, the Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground. Congratulations to Council Member Schmitz, Donna. <laughs> Joe A. Sturdivant is with us tonight. <clears throat> and um, so is his charming son, I might say. And he is recognized for leadership contributing to the National School Boards Association for his involvement in the Highlander Center and the Encore program. Thank you, Joe. Joseph S. Sturdivant is with us tonight, and he um, is recognized for his leadership in contributing to the Ramsdale softball field and playground and the Islander website. Joel, thank you. Congratulations for what you did for our staff, students. <laughs> Bobby Williams could not be with us tonight, but we would like to recognize him for his involvement in the Highlander Center, Encore, the Islander website, Synergy, Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. How about a round of applause for Council Person Bobby Williams. We also want to recognize two other members of the school board as recipients of the 2013 Honorable Mention Magna Awards, and that would be, first, John Larkin. Let us thank John. John was actually out there and helped us pick up the award. And then, last but not least, Lori Meyer, who was recognized as a recipient of the 2013 National School Board Association. It's your turn. As you know, we couldn't have done this without the leadership of two other is, uh, outstanding individuals. Walt Faist was here, um, but had to leave. Um, so from the city, the city manager's office, Mr. Walt Faist, and also our leader of the our, our, le our leader of Columbia Heights Public School, Superintendent Kathy Kelly. <laughs> I'd like to read for the record. Walt Faist is recognized for leadership contributing to the National School Board Association 2013 Magno Award Honorable Mention for the Highlander Center Encore Islander website Synergy, the Ramsdale Softball Field and Playground, and the Pedestrian Bridge. Thank you, Walt, for your dedication to the students, staff, and community of Columbia Heights Public Schools. Thank you, Mary. How about a round of applause for Walt one last time? <laughs> and I do see... Keith Winchettle sitting in the audience, and we could not have done it without Keith either. So Keith, would you please stand up, and how about a round of applause for Keith Winchettle? <laughs> Yay, go team. <laughs> Lastly, we wouldn't have this award at all if Principal Mary Busman hadn't been nice enough to get the initial um, application done whole up in the superintendent's conference room and work through many rewrites. And so I would like to thank Principal Mary Busman and give her a certificate that reads, um, is recognized for contributing to the successful application submission of the 2013 Magna Award. And we want to thank you for your dedication to our students, staff, and community and making this award possible for the Columbia Heights Public School District. Thank you, Mary. And that concludes this part of the program. Thank you all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our next uh, agenda item is communication of boards. Citizens, employees, 
At this time, any citizen employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that the administration follow up. However, the board will not take action at this uh, meeting on request presented at this time. Is there anyone like to speak to the board? Anyone who would like to come before the board? Seeing none, we will move on. Our next agenda item, consent agenda, consists of minutes of the May 14 and 28, 2013 school board meetings, personnel report, treasurer's report for April 2013. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? I'll move that. Second. I do. Motion, motion by Laura, second by John. Discussion? I do have a couple of corrections. Uh, on the reports from members of the board on May 14th, there were a couple of typos that um, need to be corrected. I was at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, a girls' softball meeting, also at the career celebration. So if those could be made, that'd be okay. good for the record. Right. Any other uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion has carried. All right. Next on our agenda is uh, reports from members of the board. Board members um, oops, will report on uh, board activities since the last regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. I will start with Ms. Lee. Well, it's been an exciting uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we were, um, many of the board members and I, were at the dedication of the tower um, and the roundabout. So that was exciting to see um, people there and seeing the artwork from all the students. And congratulations to all of them. And thank you so much for all your hard work. And once again, another great collaboration. Um, I was at, I, I was honored to be asked in, uh, to speak at the West Metro Education Program graduation. Um, they uh, graduated 42 students, and it was a packed house, and there was a good uh, amount of Columbia Heights uh, kids there and people. So it was very nice. Um, it was a very nice graduation, and congratulations to all those students from all the different uh, districts uh, in the entering su suburbs. Um, I also was at an executive meeting for West Metro Education um, where we it was about a three-hour meeting talking a, a lot of things that are going on and going to be happening in the next three, four months at West Metro. So keep an eye out for that. And then also I met with student uh, superintendent Tony Johns to work on policy for, um, for communication for uh, parents and staff, just as we do here, um, to the board and setting it up so it's a little bit more user-friendly, you might say, and uh, more um, easy for parents to come and speak to the board in the beginning versus waiting until the end. But we, we uh, revamped it, and we're going to be voting that in next meeting. And then the day that we all work very hard for came about this, uh, this last week, and it was a very chilly night, but it was probably what I call, and I have called for the last 11 years, one of the best nights of the year. And it's what we all work very, very hard for and that is the graduation. So all the students were there. They were respectful. They had a great time. Congratulations to staff who pulled it all together on a kind of a rainy, misty, chilly night. But you know, you just didn't feel it because you saw all those faces and how, you know, how excited they were. And then thank you to the, the community once again for the fire trucks and the police department that escorted them to their all night party. From what I heard, uh, you know, there were some that arrived at my house at 3.30 in the morning telling us about the hypnotist and uh, the music and the food, which there was a large amount of, I guess. So um, thank you to the parents and volunteers who did that also. It was, it was a great night for the kids, and it's a wonderful tradition um, that they do. And I, I really appreciate it, and I appreciate so much being a part of that graduation. It's, like I said, it's what we work, it's what we work for all year long just to watch them walk across that stage and take that diploma and go into their second <coughs> chapter of their life. So I think that's it for me. All right, Ms. Meyer. Um, I too was at the Heritage Tower dedication and um, I was also able to attend the high school variety show, which was a lot of fun and very entertaining. <laughs> um, and the um, graduation ceremony as well. So I just wanted to wish all the graduates, you know, wish them well and and um, on their next chapters in their lives and success for them all. So that concludes my report. Great, thank you. Ms. Palmer. <clears throat> uh, it's been a really kind of busy, hectic couple of weeks here, but it was really pretty exciting. Um, I started out with, um, I attended the Highlander picnic. It was inside because it was threatening rain out there. And immediately following that, went over to the, um, the Heritage Tower dedication. 
Um, and it was really great to see so many people coming out when it obviously looked like it was just going to open up and start pouring. So um, it, what, a, what a great job. I, I can't wait to see when they get all the plantings and everything done. Definitely take a look at it. Um, that's our students, our community that put that together. And it, it, is, um, it is a treasure for this community. Um, I also um, had the um, honor of being able to attend three different graduation ceremonies. Um, and the first one was over at 916, and it was for the Wells program. And um, yeah, it, was, it was really um, a, a very emotional ceremony. These are um, students that um, need a great deal of support and care, and the milestones and the struggles that they go through. It, it was... It, it brought tears to my eyes. I mean, it was it was just amazing, and everybody was there. You know, not just the students and their parents. It was their grandparents and their nieces and their nephews and their third cousins. It was it was absolutely incredible. Um, next year, I I I, I really think we should all go. It was really 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 awesome. Uh, they're great kids, great kids, and they work so hard. Um, the next one that I went to was um, over at Metro Heights. And uh, they had five students that, um, that um, were receiving their diplomas there at Metro Heights. A lot of the other students were receiving them with their regular, um, their, with their um, high school. And um, they were a very impressive group. They kind of came with the same story. I started out a little bit behind. I started out behind. I came here. I found the skills I needed. And I was able to accomplish great things. Um, there was one student that particularly impressed me he said he started out a year behind. He just slept through his first year of high school. He graduated a full year early. He managed to complete four years of high school with the support um, of, the, of, the, of the, um, the teachers and the staff over there. Um, they said he worked from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. every day, and he accomplished his goals and graduated as a junior. So I, I, I was extraordinarily impressed with that. So I think that's a, that's, that is really making a difference. Every one of them found within themselves the ability to succeed because of that program. And, I, and uh, so I, I was very impressed with that as well. I look forward to seeing the new facilities, which will be uh, this, this uh, coming up year. So that that's, looks forward, I look forward to that. And then, of course, our graduation here, which is like 100 and some weddings. And the, they all looked so confident as they were coming across the stage this year. It was, oh, I'm going on too much. It, 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 it's always such an emotional experience. It's the best ever. And I'm so incredibly grateful to the community for allowing me to be able to participate in this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Landwehr. Yeah, I would agree. It's, it's a, such a great honor to be on that stage and, and to greet all the graduates as they come, come by. And so, yes, thank you for that opportunity. Um, that was a great night, and you know we we kind of have a tradition in my family to welcome the uh, the graduates as they come around the corner from on 40th Avenue towards Mersion Hall, and so we got to do that again this year and hold up signs and, and just hoop and holler, and it, it's 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 a lot of fun. What a great tradition we have here in Heights uh, that to do that every year, and uh, <clears throat> thanks again to the fire and uh, police for for uh, the escort makes it extra special. Um, I was at the Heritage Tower celebration as well. Uh, another great thing to celebrate, you know, the synergy between the school district and the city. And um, I just hope that that just continues to grow and grow because our community um, has has that that small town feel. And when we do things like this, it, it just uh, enhances that and, and benefits everybody. Um, was also at a girls softball game, the last one of the, the season, um, and then uh, attended uh, several Lions meetings and Chamber of Commerce meetings. Great, thank you. Mr. Larkin. Um, I had the opportunity to see North Park's fifth grade band conclude for the year and get ready to come up next year. Um, the Heritage Tower, Heritage Tower dedication was, it was really fun to see uh, some of the looks on some of the kids' faces when they actually unveiled it and you could see it actually in stone. Um, I had the opportunity to go and attend the uh, North, oh, I'm sorry, Columbia Academy's uh, academic breakfast, I think it was called, where they recognized the kids that um, were 
three quarters of A honor roll in order to be to be recognized. And I believe there was 140 hmm. kids out of I don't know how many 600 kids in the school. So that that's just the A honor roll kids. So that was was pretty amazing. Some nice things are happening there. Um, I also was able to attend the graduation ceremony at Columbia Academy. Um, again, very nice job was put on by the school. A lot of kids got recognized for some good things they did. We talk about packed houses. Uh, if we can figure out how to get those parents to be that active throughout the year, we talk about parent engagement. There was just a ton of parents that were there and very excited and enthusiastic about um, where their kids were at. So uh, it was nice to see the turnout of the parents. Um, I also uh, was at the high school commencement and it was my first time doing it and it was, it was a really cool thing to see. Um, as far as the, from the fire department's perspective, we're always happy to, to help out in escorting the kids. We always tell the firefighters to use their discretion and we only have to replace one siren this year, so that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted to thank Superintendent Kelly for making the time available prior to the meeting tonight to get a chance to, to visit with some of the people that you know have played a big role in receiving this award that the, the district and the city got, so thanks for doing that. All right, um, I'll just mention uh, that uh, my highlight over the last couple of weeks um, was high school graduation, um, day we all look forward to, and, and it was just a great day. So congratulations to all the graduates. All right, Superintendent Kelly. It's been such a whirlwind in the last couple of weeks that I'm just gonna defer my report um, for purposes of time tonight, but just say thank you to both staff, school, students, and community. Um, for a great couple of weeks. Outstanding. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, next on our agenda, the board will recognize Representative Connie Bernardi for her support of free all-day kindergarten and adult basic education. Yes, we can do that. So, um, Ms. Come on up. We're uh, recognizing Connie Bernardi tonight for her uh, dedication to support for all day kindergarten and uh, for her uh, representation, representing our school district very well in the legislature. So I'll turn it over to Kristen. And I'd like to thank you for being one of the authors on a bill that supports adult basic education and the growth factor for that. That really helps to uh, support the programs that uh, provide education for the adults in our community. And in our community, in Columbia Heights and Fridley, uh, we share Metro North Adult Basic Ed um, down at 4111 Central. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support of that program. Well, Representative Bernardi, welcome. And this is a big moment in our district, and um, it really is a special time for us here with the Columbia Heights Public Schools. We have been very lucky over the years to have wonderful representatives at the legislature, um, at the legislative level and at the city level, as you can see from the earlier honors tonight. But working on all day, every day kindergarten has been a goal of this district since the year 2000, and I think it was Dr. David Balo who first started off <coughs> lobbying down at the Capitol. And um, we have uh, talked and talked and talked, and this year the dream was shaped into reality by Representative Bernardi. We went down and we pled our case to her, and she said, first of all, she said, I wanna hear what you do well. And then she said, and what can I do for you? And it was very, very, it was an honor to have, be in your office. And she took copious notes on everything we had to say, and then drafted a bill, and lo and behold, she called me up and she said, come on down and testify. <laughs> and I went, oh, great! <laughs> so the team, and I want to thank the management team as well, got all the facts and figures together. And for us in Columbia Heights, we've been doing all-day kindergarten since the year 2000, and <clears throat> we, for us and for our students, it's not an enhancement. It's essential, see? <laughs> and um, it comes at a cost, an unrecognized cost, of $668,000 a year for us. And the very fact that Representative Bernardi not only championed it, but got it through the legislature and had a nod for the early ed as well, um, was thrilling to us. And so we thought special moments should be celebrated along the way. And so we have a few special things for you. 
Um, the first is a plaque, and it's for Representative Connie Bernardi is recognized for outstanding legislative leadership in the areas of free, voluntary, all-day kindergarten and adult basic education. We want to thank you for your dedication to our students, staff, and community in the, in the Columbia Heights Public School District. So thank you so much. <laughs> we're, we're not done yet, though. <laughs> Because I believe first, um, we, as, as, as Brian is pulling up something, we have from uh, Principal Ford School, we have some more people that want to speak to you. Thank you. And they sent you a note, so we're just going to keep piling on. And then Highland Elementary, and I'm going to need some help here. I need two Vannas. Here we go. Sent a big picture that says, oh. Dear Representative Bernardi, we love full day kindergarten. Thank you for making it possible for everyone. And they all signed their names. That's a <laughs> shout out from Highland. And North Park sent you all their pictures. Oh. And they're saying thank you for supporting kindergarten. So those are memories from our students. And last but not least, from all of us to you, the apple of our eye award. <laughs> here's, your, here's a golden apple so that when you're at your office, you can think about us and know that we're still thinking about you. Thank you. How about a round of applause for Connie Bernardi? <laughs> Connie's gonna say a few words, so we're gonna put down all of this. Well, thank you so very much. This has so much meaning to me because I value education so much and value the work that you're doing here at Cumbia Heights. And I, I know it's a labor of love by all the staff I, I meet and the students that I know that go here. Uh, the education bill was something to be very, very proud of this year, and it really reflects the values of our state and really wanting to have an excellent workforce so that we can have a great state and a great economy. And we believe that starts with our youngest learners. And I want to tell you that Columbia Heights, that you are the leaders in making that your value and making that a reality for your students. And um, I learned, I said, I recited it with you. It's not, it's not an enhancement, it's essential to have all day care. Okay, and I do want to let you know at the legislature, you were the role models for the state. And they, Columbia Heights, and along with Fridley, really carried the message to the legislature how important this is and it's essential for learning and um, our youngest scholars and I'm using that in my <laughs> my letter to the editor I just wrote our youngest scholars it's so it's so important to have and have them know that they're va they value education and we value them and and what they learn is so important and now Columbia Heights School District is going to get a lot of needed funding to help you accomplish your goals and your dreams with these with these students, and that's that's a big deal because education needs to be supported. It just can't it can't just be uh, rhetoric. It needs to have substance with it. And I would say our education this bill had a lot of substance to it that will really help Columbia Heights. And I want to thank Superintendent Kelly and all the staff who came down to the Capitol on more than one occasion and um, really shared the message about how important it is. Our youngest scholars start out early and have. Um, really to close the achievement gap, which is awesome. And our education bill just wanna start from our youngest learners pre, um, preschool all the way to um, higher education. And I'm happy to report we have a, uh, for two years we're gonna have a freeze on higher education at our public schools in Minnesota, which I think is great. And um, there's lots of other great things in the bill and I wanna thank you for your leadership helping make it happen. And these truly are really, really mean a lot to me. And I'm looking forward to our continued collaboration because that's what you guys are all about here at Columbia Heights and we are all about. And so can't wait to see the work that we do together for our scholars. So thank you. Thank you so much, Connie. And how about another round of applause for and if you would like, I think the board will line up. As 
uh, Representative uh, Bernardi um, exits and, and, and shakes her hands. This, was a, this is a night, at least for this superintendent, it's going to remember for a very, very long time. And for our littlest scholars, for a lifetime. Thank you so much. Again. All right. Thanks again, uh, Representative Bernardi. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Next on our agenda this evening is the uh, Summer Academy Joint Powers Agreement. The board will be presented with information on Summer Academy. And here this evening are Bill Holmgren, our Director of Finance and Operations, and John Clippins, Director of Summer Academy. Welcome. Chairman, Bar Chairman Bardell. Members of the school board, Superintendent Kathy Kelly. As you know, um, Summer Academy, um, we've been a part of this program for quite a few years. And if you were here this morning, you saw it all come back to life. And it was kind of fun seeing all the kids come in, in this morning. But uh, um, the uh, agreement that we have with Summer Academy is coming to a close as the end of uh, June. Um, so we have John Clippins. He is the director of Summer Academy to uh, give you an update on the program. And uh, next week, we will be looking to extend that uh, agreement with Summer Academy. Yeah, thank you for uh, allowing me to come and share tonight. Today was a very, very exciting day. Uh, we had uh, 1,300 students come uh, with lots of energy for their first day of Summer Academy. So it was just a great, great first day. Um, and if you don't know uh, a lot about Summer Academy, Summer Academy is, is a a program that's existed for quite a while, since 1978. Um, some school districts came together and, and decided, we really need a program for gifted and talented students. We're having a hard time doing it as a, as a district alone. And so five school districts came together to, to make Summer Academy. Uh, currently, there are 12 school districts that are involved in the consortium that invite uh, students to come to Summer Academy. So each of the school districts have a board member. And we meet quarterly, and we decide uh, the programming that should be involved and the students that should be invited. Um, those board members go back to their school districts, and they determine the qualifications for students to be invited to the program. And then in March, we start inviting students, and they, they sign up all throughout the spring, and then they come uh, in June. And for the, uh, ever since 2001, they've been coming to Columbia Heights. And this is just a great, great facility to use, especially with two schools. Um, on the same campus, and so we love coming here. And as I shared earlier, we have uh, students from 12 different school districts. We have uh, approximately 1,240 students uh, taking classes. We have another 50 students that are serving as teaching assistants, and the classes we have are just a wide variety. Um, one of the new classes that we have this year is a class called Lego Robotics. It's a lot different than the Legos that I used to do <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, so they're taking Legos, they're taking robots, and they're taking computer software and working those together. Uh, we have an, another one of our classes that is very popular every year is a, a physics, physics, physics class. Uh, they study roller coasters and how roller coasters work. Um, they shoot off rockets in the field back here. Um, and last year they actually had um, a hovercraft in a, in a park just south of here that the students were able to see. Um, we have more than, more than science and technology classes as well. We have a couple classes. One of them is by um, uh, Columbia Heights teacher Scott Larson, he teaches an improvathon class. So if you like comedy sports, the students are learn, have to learn how to think on their feet. That's another class they take. Um, and we have uh, classes of cultural classes from Japan to uh, the Welsh community to uh, the Spanish community. So just lots of different choices for students. Uh, the classes that we have go from grades uh, first grade all through 11th grade. Most of the students that come here are from elementary. About 80% of our students are elementary aged students. And so um, that's kind of where Summer Academy is at right now. Right now the, the enrollment is strong. We actually, the school board had, had talked about kind of uh, making a little bit of a cap on the, uh, the students that come here. And so we, we made the mark of 1,200 that we were gonna try to keep it under and more students wanted to come so we, so we, <laughs> so we let them come. So it's been, it's been a good start and uh, we really like where we're at right now. All right. Any questions, comments? 
Um, welcome back. Yeah, welcome it's back. Great. It's Thank always you. great to see you guys here. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's quite a buzz down here. Now, I know a lot of people avoid the area because of the, all the buses and the traffic, <laughs> sure. but back, it's always great to see you guys yeah. come back. And if I, I could, I'd like to invite you. We have uh, probably our biggest night is June 26th. It's a Wednesday night, and that's our open house night. That's when all of the classes, um, either they'll have a performance or they'll display, display their projects. Um, last year, I actually had somebody counting. We had um, 4,000 people come through, and we have, we have parents, we have grandparents, we have um, some of the neighbors <coughs> from the schools will come in just to see, you know, what are the classes this year? What are the new projects this year? And so it's just a great night to celebrate um, Summer Academy. Uh, if you ever would want to come on that night or any other time, we'd love to, to show you the different classes. Uh, when you come here, I know uh, Mr. Landwehr came last year and saw some of the classes that we're offering. It just, you'll be pretty amazed at what uh, the students are learning and what the teachers are teaching. What time is that at? Yep. It's uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and they treat you very well, so it's uh, it's worth coming, definitely. <laughs> I, I'm just thrilled that you're looking at renewing, and, and uh, it's just so great to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I would just like to say that it is, I looked out the window today once I got in through the traffic, and I watched all the kids all over the place, and the orange vests were out, and um, <clears throat> Bruce Papp was out directing traffic, and I thought of Jeannie Pullen. Mm -hmm. and who was the original founder and director, executive director of the project. And I want to thank you for keeping her dream alive because it is quite a job to be an executive director of such a project, and you do it with skill and a plum. And I thought as I looked out the window that Jeannie would be so proud of all of you. So she's not here tonight to thank you, but I would like to thank you for her. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. We really appreciate having you guys here. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Next on our agenda this evening is the board will be presented with information on strategic <coughs> direction E. Tell our story. Our presenters this evening, Brian Hennekins, Director of Technology and Security Services, and Kristen Stunkel, Director of Community Education. Good evening, Chair Bardell, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. Um, this evening, um, we come before you to present on Strategic Direction E, and um, I like to. I'm, I'm very excited that you know we've we've had a lot of great things happening. I mean, in the first round of Strategic Directions, you've seen a lot of um, you know numbers throwing at you, and and we've kind of progressed a little bit, and um, it's 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 um, exciting to mm -hmm. you know show growth and and where we're going. Um, the first part. Um, very similar to what we've seen, uh, Columbia Heights Public Schools creates worlds of opportunity for every learner in partnership with support of small town communities by challenging all to discover their talents, unleash their potential, and develop tools for, tools for lifelong success. I take a minute to read the whole thing just because it's all about what we are with Strategic Direction E and telling our story. Yeah. Um, our core values, um, community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Um, I won't go through all the visions for 2015, <laughs> uh, what we intend to create. Um, but I think the big thing is, uh, as I said, is um, tell our story, brand development, reputation management to increase partnership and enrollment. So um, this may look a little bit different than before, but we've started to uh, incorporate um, some of our, our, our new um, needles um, in, in our gauges and driving the needle forward. Uh, but E1 is our market share of school-aged children in the district. Um, um, this is as of October 15 count. We, need, we needed to pick a specific date um, where we'd have consistent numbers. This is what we report to the state. Um, and um, this year we're at a 74.4%, which puts us at a level three, which is a, as an improvement over last year. Um, our, you know, as, as all of us know, our elementary enrollment is, is robust and, and increasing. And, and I think that that's a big um, piece of that um, needle moving forward. Um, E2, C CHPS students and families connecting us using digital media. And um, this is where our parent portal comes into play. And we've had conversations about that. Um, so it's the amount of parents that we have engaged in parent portal or school view. And, uh, and it's the amount of students engaged in school view. Um, from the student perspective, we've moved to a level two, so we're progressing. Um, from the parents' perspective, um, we're still sitting at a level one, um, and you know we, we 
do have a, a lot of uh, pieces in place to try to push that parent needle forward. There's a lot of parent um, outreach um, programming going on. And um, there's some initiatives next year um, that we'll see hopefully from the buildings that will um, expose School View a little bit more because um, we definitely want to see that connection grow. Especially at the 612, uh, because that's where our, our, our students and our parents um, have most connection with Parent Portal, especially our students. And we do have a big initiative, our personal learning initiative, mm -hmm. at the sixth grade level that um, will bring in that entire sixth grade group into that, which so that student number will drastically increase next year. Um, so that'll we, good things for the future for that. Um, E3, do you want to? Sure. So E3, you'll notice that you don't see the needle. <laughs> and that's because uh, this is one of the items that we're going to be focusing on next year. And uh, we, we do have some uh, ideas about how we're going to support the staff in demonstrating the district's core values in their everyday work. We are looking into um, having those core values added onto our IDs, uh, badges, um, as a way of really constantly affirming what our core values are, also having those laminated and placed in, a pro in prominent places throughout the, the building and the districts, the buildings and the district, so that it is that constant reminder both to staff and also to students about what our core values are. This is one of the areas where we can see a dramatic increase just by um, making the request that all of the good things that we're doing have our brand on it, have our district logo and also our mission statement. It's really important to us that when someone brings a program home from a concert or a play or something of that sort, that there's a recognition that it's a Columbia Heights Public School production. And so we are moving towards a goal of all of our performing arts and activities communications, having not only the mission, but also the logo of Columbia Heights Public Schools on it. And this is one of those areas where we've seen a dramatic increase this past year. With the district published materials also, so registrations, flyers, uh, brochures, anything of that sort, that there would be that uh, district logo and mission on it as well. And here again, we've seen a dramatic increase just by letting people know that this is an expectation. This is a consistent theme that we have so many wonderful things going on in this district, and we want people to recognize and identify that this is Columbia Heights Public Schools. Um, mm -hmm. Climate questions um, and, and surveying how the climate of the buildings are, um, or the, all the schools are, is something that um, was part of this uh, strategic direction. And um, we've been putting those questions, three specific questions, into surveys, particularly right now, we've done it with technology surveys, um, and those technology surveys have been given second grade through 12th grade, or second grade through 11th grade, actually. Um, and um, so we, we're focusing in, in each area, and overall, um, you know, we're at a level four at 81%, so we're seeing overall in the district um, that our climate of our buildings is, is, is high, and um, obviously we wanna see that move up into and push that needle up into a level five. But um, so we do survey grades two through tw through eleven to receive this uh, score, and it and we kind of try to base our um, survey off of as close to scientific as possible, um, and uh, um, paying attention to how we're doing surveys with our outside organizations currently, and what our sample size needs to be, and uh, making sure that we get a proper sample size to make sure that within plus or minus a couple percent, we're we're pretty confident that we're right at that level 481%. And those questions regard the students feeling that this is a safe and supportive place for their learning. So um, our overall maximum score uh, was 4.25 and our actual score was 2.85. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we're pushing the needle forward. Um, Last year we were a 0.95 for a total score at a level two. This year in the strategic direction we've moved up to a level four. So um, we're, we're definitely moving forward and moving in the right direction in strategic direction E. Obviously we can see that there's areas that we can drive that needle forward even more. Um, but overall we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. Any questions? <coughs> 
No, I just think it's important that we get that information out mm -hmm. to the community. People need to hear that there's positive things that are going on. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, you guys. Yeah, nice job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord. I, I just ha I just have a comment, and this is really to to everybody. Um, <coughs> I a couple of years ago when we put together and we did the strategic plan and stuff, you always kind of wonder where everybody's going to take it. Mm -hmm. and how, how it's going to, and it's almost seems as if the layers just keep <coughs> growing and more and more keeps getting accomplished. And we're starting to pin down and drill down mm -hmm. into specific areas for improvement. And I just think that everybody has done just such a fabulous job on being able to boil it down to a couple of things that we can actually measure. That's a lot of work and, and I have so much appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a, yeah, I just, I, I just think the power of being able to measure this and actually going back and seeing where we've improved or, or haven't improved, um, is is a big step forward. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice presentation. <clears throat> All right. Next on our agenda, uh, we're going to hear about the grades six through twelve student handbooks. Uh, and uh, the board will be presented with information on the 2013-2014 six through 12 student handbooks. We have uh, Mr. Dan Robleski, the Columbia Heights High School assistant principal, and Mr. Rick Otsby, Columbia Academy assistant principal. Gentlemen. Good evening, uh, board chair, Superintendent Kelly, members of, of the school board. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, both uh, Mr. Robleski and I, we, about two years ago, we started working on the handbook together. We both came into the district, were hired at the same time pretty much. And um, every year about this time, we've been able to collaborate and work together and uh, keep our handbooks as it's not, they're not written the same, but try and keep them universal, user-friendly, formatted the same. And we've been able to do that uh, again this year, and uh, I'll present a little bit of the updates and changes from the academy, and then Dan will go after me. The, uh, each, each year our students are fortunate enough to receive a, uh, a student uh, handbook, and a part of that handbook, uh, or a part of their, uh, in their handbook is the, their, their organi organizer, in their, in their organizer is their handbook. And every year we have a little competition and this year, uh, Antonio Pena Manuga uh, was able to uh, win the competition. He uh, had the, won the cover, and it's a vote for the, uh, who gets to represent the cover of the student organizer. And uh, he's in eighth grade, and I think he did a wonderful job. And uh, there it is right there. Uh, some of the updates, the school calendar, staff contact information, school song, parent-teacher conferences, the, when we open our doors at 7.45 and close them at 3.30, that was also included in our handbook and also uh, updates in the extracurricular activity section of the handbook as well was updated. Uniforms and dress code, probably an area that we did the most updating in. Uh, the, the parts that I underline here must be worn every day. So our navy blue and gold polo shirt with the logo must be worn every day. Uh, khakis or navy blue plants, uh, uh, shorts, skirts, and capris uh, this remain the same, but no skin-tight pants or shorts. Any visible accessories uh, that the students are to wear have to be navy blue or gold, and also if they're to wear headbands would be an example of that. Uniforms are expected to be worn as made, be worn to and from school, so students have to wear them to school, from school, and they're not allowed to wear bandanas, house shoes, or slippers as they attend uh, the academy. <laughs> Uh, another uh, part of the dress code that we wanted to make sure we mentioned, uh, there are certain times when students are allowed to not be in school form, um, school uniform, that'd be school pictures or dances. Uh, during those times, we would use a dress code that we had in previous student handbooks. And in the handbook it, itself, we will, we will go through those specifics in there. Honor roll information was included. Uh, last year, we went to a grade point uh, scale. We moved from... Um, it was 12 point to, to O. Uh, now we went to 4.0 to um, for an A, uh, where we changed that. So we wanted to make sure the honor roll information got in there. 3.5 to 4 for an A, 2.83 to 3.49 for a B. Cafeteria, school lunches cost $2.40. Last year they were $2.30, so they went up uh, a dime uh, from the previous school year. Breakfasts remain the same at $1.25 for students who pay full price. 
and thank you very much. I have one thing I to say. Sure. <laughs> That's a lot of work put together a handbook. And good job, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good evening, board, board Chair Bardell, members of the board, Superintendent Kathy Kelly, good evening. Um, just want to talk a little bit is each, each year as we go over the handbook, um, one thing that I do appreciate is collaborating not only with the middle school, but also having the opportunity to work with teaching and learning, um, as well as cabinet members as we um, go through our, our student handbook and our planners and making sure that they're up to date and as user-friendly as possible. So I, 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 I love the fact that we're able to collaborate, not just with high school, not with the middle school, but everybody participates in making sure that we have um, top-rated handbooks. Mm -hmm. And the collaboration between the two, um, high school and middle school, it eases that transition into the high school. So I really appreciate that. Um, again, off of... Um, what Mr. Osby said, we have uh, three areas we're going to look at is we have the updates, changes, and we also have in our handbook, the part of the handbook is in Spanish for the high school. So our, these are our updates that I'll, I'll be talking about tonight. And our first one is our front cover. As you can see, uh, Charmaz Neal is a sophomore, and what we have at the high school is we have a digiting Im image, digital imaging class, and that is um, done by Martha Ortman. And we have a contest or an assignment in the class where students are um, to make the handbook cover. And what we've seen is um, such a, a high quality and in the development of our handbook cover that we've now created a front and back. And so students are allowed, the whole student body uh, votes on the front, and second place gets the back, which is really unique. And as you can see, we have our branding of our, on the lower left and lower right, we have our, our branding that we've included on our, our handbook. And our back cover design that has our school song was done by Annie Agama. And that was of last year's graduation. Nice. Um, just some updates. Uh, what we did is we updated our lunch schedule in the in the passing times in between each lunch. Uh, doesn't affect anything other than it's it's now updated. It gives our our cafeteria staff more time to prepare in between each lunches that we have. And again, we did an update with our branding of of having our trade trademark on our mission statement and core values. Update of our calendar. Handbook directory, um, we found that that uh, parents and students do use the handbook to be able to locate, email, and call our staff. And then some changes that we did. Um, again, I think it was uh, with collaboration with teaching and learning. Um, what we've done is we do have our course registration guide. And three things that we have for uh, credits for graduation were in our course registration guide, which is out in February. And throughout the year, students have questions about um, the different requirements that we have. And so what we did is we took that information from our registration handbook and incorporated it into our student handbook. So now it's there year round for students and parents to um, access. And so this, this information that I'm presenting on this slide and the next two are just a, a transition from our our registration guide. And it just gives out our, our outline for graduation, the 27 credits, um, with some changes for the um, 2017 class as well. And then um, through our task force, we also um, did our athletic structure fee that's been included in our handbook. One of the neat things that we have done this year all through, also through our activities task force is um, there's our fee structure. And a, a unique thing that we have on our, can you back me up? Mm -hmm. 
is that we are now online for registration, which is, is it, yeah, it's great. It's nice. And then again, being consistent with the middle school, we did uh, insert our, our daily schedule that talks about our times when students are allowed in the building, what activities they need to be involved in, and when they need to exit the building as well. And school view, a change that is really great to see happen, is hopefully that will increase our parent involvement in using that, is it will now have the bus schedule on it as well. And again, our lunch prices have gone up. And then again, on the back section of our handbook, we do have it in Spanish. Any questions? Questions? Yeah. I just have a comment. I, I hear a lot from the community that um, it's important for us to set high expectations and then to hold our students to those expectations. And um, it's good to see so you know, the, the detail of the handbook. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to pass that on that um, I think our committee wants our school district to, to, um, to have standards and then to maintain those standards. I just have a quick question. Could you remind us, um, they're available in paper form, right? Hard copy and then also on the website. Correct, that's yep. correct. Yep, that's correct. Yep. All right, just wanted to yep. make sure I thought that was the case, so. Nice job. Yeah, Thank nice you. job. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, next on our agenda, the board will be presented with an update on the statewide health improvement grant 2.0. Our presenter is Kristen Stunkel. Good the evening. acronym is SHIP. <laughs> Good evening, Chair Bardell, members of the School Board, Superintendent Kelly. I'm very happy to come before you to share with you what we have done with the Statewide Health Improvement Program 2.0. You might remember that SHIP 1.0 provided for us Blooming Heights Edible Schoolyard slash Outdoor Classroom and um, Grow Labs and Worm Composting and various curricular materials around that. SHIP 2.0, which comes to conclusion at the end of June, has had three different areas of focus. The first has been on active classrooms. So this means that, uh, that there are moments during a class, perhaps before they're about to take a test or do something that's um, really difficult, that they might do some movement to get that, the uh, blood flowing and, and increase their alertness. So we've been able to provide um, energizer trainings through the University of Minnesota at Highland and also at North Park. Valley View has really embraced a program called Jam and Minute. They've even posted some of their Jam and Minute activities on that website. And so at the three elementaries, they're doing uh, those kinds of active classroom days. We've also been able to increase some materials for recess and for PE, and also some interesting um, equipment in classrooms that help the students when they're a little wiggly. Uh, we have some, uh, some of the balls that students can sit on. We also have what are called hockey stools that kind of look like a figure eight that they can kind of move back and forth on while they're listening and, and focusing. Um, also some pedals that you can pedal while you're sitting in class and that's been very popular at the Achieve program and also at the high school as well. So we've been able to bring a lot of materials into all of the class, into all of the schools through the SHIP grant. Another thing that we've done is taken out some of the unhealthy rewards that were happening in school. Um, the cupcakes for birthdays, the pizza parties for the classes that read the most, those kinds of things. Valley View has really led the way in a really innovative approach towards birthdays. They now have medallions that they wear when it's their birthday. And instead of having a cupcake party, they're wearing a medallion. And one of the unexpected benefits of this is that then when that student is walking down the hall, everyone knows that it's their birthday. And so it's been a nice community building uh, as well. And then another thing that we've done is the statewide, uh, the um, safe routes to school. And so we've done travel tallies where we've been able to track now for two years the number of students who walk to school, bike to school, are driven to school, take the bus, et cetera. We're really trying to encourage students and families to, to walk or bike to school. It's better 
for the health of the student, it's better for the air quality, et cetera. And we worked closely with our Anoka County um, counterparts through SHIP that also helped us to secure that MnDOT Safe Routes to School Non-Infrastructure Grant. So I just really want to express gratitude for the, the Anoka County staff on that. So those are, um, very briefly, some of the things that we've been able to do with the SHIP 2.0. All of the schools have benefited. Um, the teachers have been trained, we have increased materials, and we are um, very hopeful that as SHIP 3.0, uh, my understanding is that that has been funded now through our state legislature. We're very hopeful that we will be included as a, another partnership with Anoka County. And Anoka County did select us as one of the few school districts to receive this SHIP 2.0, and we're very hopeful that we'll be invited for SHIP 3.0 as well. Do you have any questions? Yeah. No, oh, okay. uh, what, what are you planning on uh, looking into next down the line with uh, SHIP 3.0? I mean, a lot of the groundwork yeah. and you know materials right. and stuff have been purchased. So what sure. are your plans? Sure. Um, it really depends on the details of SHIP 3.0. That is determined by the state legislature. I have heard rumor that there might be a farm to school component, uh, which we would be very interested in um, being able to partner with, and and then just continuing to develop some of uh, some of the programs that we've already done. As I said, that we've we've just started. We're in the first year of doing some of this active classroom kind of behavior, and so we want to continue to develop that and make sure that that's happening in more and more of the classrooms. I should have also mentioned that we had people from the staff from Anoka County come and do some classes uh, at the high school and also at the middle school on nutrition, and they also met with our nutrition workers. My understanding is that we bought t-shirts that say, give peas a chance <laughs> for our nutrition workers to wear, which are very <laughs> cute. Um, and so there, there are I mean, numerous, uh, numerous things to mention, and all of which we could continue to develop for the health and well-being of our students. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, no? I want, I like, want one of those t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> nice presentation, Kristen. Thank you. Well, I'm just very grateful to uh, the state legislature for the funding and for Anoka County for selecting us to partner. Thank you very much. And now you're going to talk to us about information on the Anoka County Children and Family Council grants, along with Nicole Hallaby. And the acronym there is the ACCFC grant. Yes. Anoka County Child and Family Council is a council that uh, we've participated on for many years. Um, myself and Nicole and, uh, and Nicole's staff have all served on this council, and we've been beneficiaries, as you probably remember from previous board presentations, um, of grants from the ACCFC. This is a countywide group, and uh, so this past year, we've been fortunate to have received two grants. I'll mention the one, and then I'll hand the, the microphone over to Nicole. So Opening Doors for English Learners is the grant that we've received now for, I believe it's three years, through our ECFE program. This is a collaboration that we have with also Fridley's ECFE and um, Spring Lake Park's ECFE, and then also with Metro North Adult Basic Education. We've been able to, through this grant, uh, pro provide a mobile dental clinic that has come two or three times a year and parks in the parking lot providing dental care for our students. And, and then also we've been able to do this partnership with, uh, with Metro North where the parents have been able to receive some computer skills and English learning um, through our ECFE program. We also have that early childhood family education class for English learners. We've been able to expand that from an hour and a half long class to a two hour long class um, through this grant. And we have received that grant for another year which we're very grateful for. Another grant that we've received um, this year was the second year, and these are competitive grants and you do have to apply every year, is the Tiered Mental Health Intervention Grant. And with those monies, we are able to purchase a check and connect person. Mm -hmm. um, we ha were very fortunate to have Casey Bastian at the high school uh, who worked with a select group, a caseload of kids who were identified by parents, by staff members, who needed someone extra to check in with them every day she did home visits, she did activities, she tracked their grades, 
And I'm very proud to say that of all 30 of her students, those who still remained in Columbia Heights who didn't move, um, they all finished the school year strong. They all were passing the majority of their classes and they were very proud of themselves and we really think that Check and Connect person really made a difference for those 30 students. Uh, another piece that we were able to fund is the partially fund the Islander. And the Islander, um, uh, in cooperation with it being a tiered mental health grant, uh, has run many different stories on depression, uh, suicide prevention, um, has done some really nice pieces around mental health. And then last but not least is we were able to use some of the money to help fund our programming with Lee Carlson, our counseling groups. And if you saw in the North Metro uh, last week, was it last week? <laughs> it's like time is flying. Yeah. Um, they did a really nice article on our uh, Lee Carlson and how Columbia Heights has been um, the biggest supporter of their school counseling programs and how much that helps our families and students in the class. Mm -hmm. Great. Any questions, comments for Nicole or Kristen? Are, are these both state grants then, or where does the money come from specifically? The, yeah, the, the, it's through Anoka County, and Anoka County has to apply to the state to get okay. the funds. The yeah, it, and another way, another way that it's generated um, through the state legislature, which every year we're so pleased that they keep it going, is the LCTS money, which is the limited... <laughs> um, uh, it's a time study, it's time study money. And so it used to be called Random Moments and our staff works very hard. We have probably about 25, 30 staff members from a variety of positions in our district that they'll get an email, email from the state and it'll say, what were you doing at this moment of time at, in your job? And they have to code it, you know, I was talking to a parent, I was yeah. teaching a student, I was giving support to a student, and that then generates state monies and then Anoka County applies for those monies and then we, in Anoka County, every county does it a little bit differently, but in Anoka County, they've decided to do a competitive grants um, to support the schools. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you very much. Appreciate the presentation. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, the board is about to go into closed session um, to um, discuss labor negotiations. So, um, in accordance with Minnesota statute section 13D.03, the board will meet in closed session for the item on the agenda for the purpose of discussion negotiation strategies. So we will close this meeting for purposes that purpose at 8:15 p.m. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we came back into open session at 8:41 p.m. Um, our last agenda my item is uh, board topics. I, I have something I'd Go like ahead. to say. Uh, I forgot to brought, bring it up. Uh, Lori was nice enough to bring up the variety show. I would like to say congratulations to Jill Jungers. You know, she works on so many things this last part of the year. She's got the play, she had Spotlight, and then she pulled together a variety show that was pretty pretty fun, and some of the skits were absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, of course, not my son who did Beyonce, but um, there were some really <laughs> wonderful performances, and she really does a nice job and works so well. So i just like to say kudos to uh, Jill Jungers for... Her continued success in the arts and the theater she just does an awesome job so and she even like even this spring book when she's over there and working with kids and, the, and stuff so right. thank you Jill Jungers yeah, awesome. yeah and, and she even goes beyond and, and oh, has them uh, you know meet afterwards yeah. at her so she yeah above and beyond I just want to say I was also at the uh, softball girls softball banquet um, and Terry, the de dedication of the coaches there is really phenomenal. And um, just the team camaraderie, it goes way beyond softball, yeah. and, and that's great. And I also want to thank, the, I forgot to thank the teachers at, at the graduation. I've never seen this at a graduation where our staff lines up and shakes hands with all the graduates. The wall of teachers. Yes, and, and that mm -hmm. um, to have that support there and the fact that they do this on their own um, is just phenomenal. So thank you. All right. Questions, comments? <coughs> I, uh, 
a quota of literary genius. Alice Cooper, school's out for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. We'll adjourn this meeting at 8.45. Of course we have wow. summer academy.